You're listening to The Bible Guys, a podcast where a couple of friends talk about the Bible in fun and practical ways. Well, he's Jeff, I'm Chris, and today we are The Bible Guys, and we welcome you to listening or watching. And this is going to be a hard-hitting episode. Our podcast, of course it is. Man, just like every day. Yes, yes, because right. the Word of God. It's That's like right. A, it's like a double-edged sword. Well, Jesus is talking about forgiveness and faith. So, yeah, it's going to be yeah. a tough one. Yeah, it is good. Okay. Well, hey, we are starting out today, and Desiree wrote down, how well do you know them? How well do you know them? And it says, let's see how well Jeff really knows you. Oh. You're going to ask Jeff five questions wow. about yourself and see if he knows the right answer. These are hard. So, not even a minute ago, okay. I jotted down five thoughts. Okay. And uh, I'll start off with one that I think is easy. Okay? Okay. Growing up. Mm-hmm. But every, most people know that I currently have cats. Yes. So growing up, did I have only dogs or only cats? Those are the only two options? Only Correct. dogs, only cats? Correct. I think you had dogs. Didn't you have dogs? Yes. Yeah, I remember I you talking about dogs. Yes, yeah. because, I, because I've always said... Because I was teasing you about being a cat lady. Yeah. You're like, no, I grew up with dogs. Right, and not only that, but I, when we got married, I told Liz I wanted dogs. Mm-hmm. I was like, I love dogs. Yeah, you insisted. I insist. You put your foot down. Yes. Yes. And so we got five cats. You compromised. We compromised. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, so, but now I'm down to two because three of them died. Three of them died. Uh, you're down to two, excuse me for coughing. Uh, you're down to two and plus you're feeding the neighborhood cat. Yeah. We have a feral cat. Yeah. Yeah. That we bought a house for. Yes. For the winter. So I was mocking you when you told me about that. Yeah. 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 And then my wife and daughter, I, I put up, uh, I know I put up some cameras around the house, you yeah. know? Uh, we had some weird things happening, so I put up some cameras. And so now my wife and daughter are obsessed with the three cats that keep coming up to our house in the middle of the night. And my daughter keeps setting her alarm so that she hears it, and she goes down and feeds them at night. Yeah. And then we caught them. Now we got traps. We made a house for them. Yeah. We got traps, and my wife took them. And uh, It's really funny. We caught the biggest one. He's yeah. like a, a, a coon, a Maine coon. You know, those yeah, huge yeah, cats. Yeah, like yeah. I saw the picture of them. Stunningly beautiful. And it's so funny because they're feeding him, and they're being nice. They gave him a house. Everything's so nice. And then finally they set a trap out there. He goes into the trap. It catches him. And then they took him to this place that does free neutering. Yeah. And so I wonder what happened. He thought he was getting a free meal and he came back missing body parts, which right. is hysterically funny. So that's what they, they've done now is they're going to go ahead and they're going to take care of all the cats in our neighborhood. So we're taking care of three cats. So welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's, that's good. And I keep telling them. Literally, we were at Costco last night. My wife bought a bunch of cat food. Yeah. I'm like, why are we buying cat food? We're not that poor, yeah, right? And right. then she's like, "Oh, it's for the neighborhood cats. We buy cat food for the cats." <laughs> she right? Goes, yeah. So all right. So uh, I'm going to give oh you another goodness. easy one. Ready? Okay. Uh, I collected comic books mm-hmm. from the time I was mm-hmm. 18 mm-hmm. to the time I was like 30, 52, six. Yeah. So, uh, so I have probably 3,000 comic books. Okay. In my attic. Uh-huh. Of all of those, which are you know uh-huh. a lot of different heroes, superheroes. What is dominantly the the Spider Man? Yes, yes, it is. It is Spider Man. I know Spider Man's your guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, All look right. at I'm two for two. Two for two. Okay. Here's a Spider-Man. harder. Here's a harder one. Spider Man goes where? Yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah. Close. Um, does whatever a spider can. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Um, close. Uh, here's a harder one. Name as many of my four brothers' names as you can remember. Uh, Chucky. Yes, he's the, the number one. Donnie. Donnie. Yes. Uh, Tommy. Tommy. Oh my goodness. I can't believe you remembered this. And the one who did the artwork for us. Ringo. <laughs> Ringo. <laughs> He's the one who did the artwork. Uh, the uh, other uh, pastor uh, in Texas. He's the one I, I thought you would have gotten because he did all the artwork for us at Christmas two years yeah, ago. Yeah. Uh, oh, I know his name. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I Billy. Can't, I can't believe I, I can't believe you. Timmy. Get, I can't. I, I don't know. I, I honestly am Freddy. so impressed. It's Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't have gotten there. Yep, yeah, yep. I, I'm really impressed. Oh, Jimmy, I'm sorry. I, I am so sorry. I award you a thousand points. Wow. Okay. And then how about this one? Um, so I mentioned to everybody that our family owned a bar growing up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So the question is, who actually owned the bar? Your grandfather. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. It was my grandfather who owned the bar and uh-huh. he owned a bar and then a liquor drive through uh-huh. and then uh, like a catering place. And it was all like one big property. Yeah. And he named the drive through after my after mom. mom. Mm-hmm. And so it was Gina's drive through. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I and knew then, that one. And then, and then finally, here's the last one. And yeah. if you get this one, you'll be five okay. for five in okay. my opinion. Um, what is my favorite, absolute favorite kind of food? 
ice cream. But okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a pass on that. I'm not talking Be, about dessert. I'm okay. talking about like if we we're gonna favorite say let's go food. out, let's go out to eat. Oh oh oh. Um, well, favorite kind of kind food. Kind of food. Sushi. Yes. Yes. There you go. It is. Okay. Wow, good yeah, job. So, so I was still, still thinking Youngstown, and I was thinking about that ice cream that you like so yeah, much. Yeah, Handles. Yeah, Handles. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there was a place, I got ice cream at a Handles in Huntington Beach, California. Was it blue it, and it white? Was, it was all, yeah, yeah, it was blue and white Handles. That's it? That, that was last uh, couple weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, they had butter pecan. Did you get it? I did not. Well, got, you got, know, it's got, like got, one got of the top... Road. Top 10 flavors in the world is yes. Handel's Butter Pecan. Yeah, yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah, but you didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a Butter Pecan guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but wow. there, there's a Handel's in Huntington Beach. Yeah, well, uh, so so Handel's started in Youngstown, Ohio, uh -huh. became one of the best ice cream places recognized in the United uh -huh. States, uh -huh. and then uh, never really had any, um, any, any places outside of Youngstown. Uh -huh. But then one guy moved to Naples, Florida, uh -huh. and said, can I do a franchise? And he approached them. And they actually, that was a new thought for them. Yeah. So it sounds like what you're saying is somebody went out. Somebody else Beach. did something in Huntington Beach, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, wow. it was really good. Very silky ice cream. So if you had a choice between Handel's Butter Pecan uh -huh. and Handel's Butter Pecan and your favorite sushi roll, which would you get? Oh, well, I mean, that's like apples and kangaroos. I mean, no, like no. I well, can't. If you, only, if you only take one bite, what would you take the bite of? Um, Probably sushi. Yeah, really? Wow. Wow. So it's like, and what's your favorite, favorite sushi roll? A uh, rainbow roll. A rainbow roll. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because it's variety. It's variety packed in one roll. Yeah. Okay. It's California roll laid over top of it. Different varieties of both salmon, tuna, uh -huh. avocado, shrimp, uh -huh. yellowtail. And so describe a, a California roll for the people who don't know. So if you're not a sushi eater. Yeah. And you go out with somebody who wants sushi, eat a California roll because well, there's well, no raw This raw is fish. a long segment, but I, but I will. It is uh, imitation crab meat uh -huh. uh, wrapped up with probably some mayo. Uh -huh. And then they roll it in seaweed. Like, like an aioli kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they, uh -huh. they, they, they pack it. They roll it in seaweed. Uh -huh. And then there's like a sticky rice that goes around it. Uh -huh. And then they put uh, sesame seeds and be cucumber on top of it. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. right. That's and right. Cucumber in it too. Cucumber yep. and crab. Cucumber yeah. and crab. Yep. With that, like a little sauce. Yeah, it's really good. So that's the one. If you if you ever have to go out for sushi and don't know what to get, go ahead and just get California roll. You're not eating any raw fish, and uh, just keep dipping it in the soy sauce, and it's a conveyance for salty goodness. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Okay. There it is. So I learned that a long time ago. All right. Well, let's move on to wow, the scripture Chris, of Luke 17. Man, I feel great about that passage, that, that whole segment there. <laughs> I nailed it. So the good news is we only have 10 verses today, but man, they're power packed. So here we go. Luke chapter 17, one through 10. It says, one day, Jesus said to the disciples, there will always be temptations to sin, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? It would be better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fall into sin. So watch yourselves. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. And then if there's repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive. The apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. The Lord said, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, may you be uprooted and thrown into the sea and would obey you. When a servant comes in from plowing or taking care of sheep, does his master say, come in and eat with me? No, he says, prepare my meal, put on your apron and serve me while I eat, and then you can eat later. And does the master thank the servant for doing what he's told to do? Of course not. In the same way, when you obey me, you should say, we are unworthy servants who have simply done our duty. Wow. So there's a couple of things in here. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me let me tackle this one first. Go. <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm sort of skipping over the forgiveness part because that's probably the bigger topic. Right. Uh, but he says, if, you've ha if you had faith, uh, even as small as mustard seed, which is, of course, the smallest of seeds, then you can say to a tree, hey... <laughs> Uh, you know, come out of the ground and 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 throw yourself into the sea, and it, and it would be done. So I've heard a lot of people talk about this in different ways. Uh, some people would say he's talking about true faith uh, as pure as the faith, perhaps that Jesus would even have himself. Right? He's talking about pure faith, mm -hmm. and he's really only talking to his disciples, to to the twelve. In other words, like he's not saying that that power is given to you. I've heard that. Uh -huh. uh, then I've heard people say, "No, no, no, no. This is a, this is an application for everybody. Every Christian today who has the Holy Spirit can can have this type of power. 
But then if that's the application, the illustration is such that it makes it sound like as long as I take care of my faith and I have absolutely true faith, I could Luke Skywalker, that X wing right out of the, uh, right out of the Dagobah uh-huh. Bay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, so what's your response to that? I think it's that. Yeah. I think it's that power is available to everybody, mm-hmm. but I think that, uh, the faith of, as a mustard seed, uh, um, mustard seeds are living, right? So they're not dead. They're living. And so when you plant a mustard seed, it grows, it puts down roots. It's all happening underground. And then gradually this little tiny seed turns into a tree, right? And, and it's over time. So if you're saying instant faith, I, I apply my faith and instantly get what I want out of it. Okay. Um, maybe that's not what he's talking about. I think he's talking about this, this, what starts off as small becomes very substantive, begins to take over and becomes something far greater than what it started off as. Mm. And I think that then it's in that context that what started small becomes great, becomes very powerful and strong, then yeah, then any, anything is possible. Yeah. And I, and I yeah. agree. I agree. Yeah. I think that, I think that it, it's applied to all of us. Um, and then, then he's talking about forgiveness and that, that's a big topic, right? Yeah. Forgiveness. So in 2024, just, just so you know, by the time this podcast airs, we will probably be right at that second week in 2024, which is titled, why should I forgive? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's coming up. Yeah. It's coming up this coming weekend then for us because okay. this will be playing in the first week. Oh yeah. Well, Hey, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. we never do this. Yeah, I yeah. mean, almost hardly ever, yeah. but Hey, if you want to, if you're interested in that, go to heritagechurch.com and click on watch now. And you could live stream at either eight 30 on, yeah. on Sunday, eight 30, 10 o'clock, 11 30 or one o'clock. We have four Eastern services time. and Eastern time. Yeah. And that is Jeff will be speaking that you're speaking the first two weeks, by the way, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. 2024. So uh, you'll be covering that. So let's talk about forgiveness for a few minutes. Yeah. Whew. So he says, every time a person comes to you, even if they wrong you seven times a day, if they come again and ask for forgiveness, you must forgive. Right. How crazy is that? Uh, it's Does, hard. Doesn't that seem like you're welcoming abuse in your life? Yeah. And so that's, you know, that that's a, that's a fine line, right? Yeah. So it's not, he is not saying you have to allow abusive people in your life. Right. But if you have an abusive person you can't get away from, you mm-hmm. keep forgiving. So he's not demanding that we always allow abuse in our life. Right. That, that is not what he's saying there. And I think if you put that, if you try to superimpose this idea that we permit abuse, um, that's not exactly what Jesus is saying. Well, because, because this principle does apply with, in other words, like, hey, it, 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 is a, it is a right and biblical thing to forgive somebody and get away from them. Right. 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 So if you're in a physically abusive situation... Uh, the number one thing is get safe, right? Be get safe. away, get mm-hmm. safe. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, but the command still is to forgive as hard as that is. Right. Right. Because forgiving atrocities, uh, you know, uh, do you ever see those YouTube clips or maybe a TikTok clip where, uh, you know, uh, there's a prison sentence and you have a family forgiving the murder of their child. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And they're Christians or most likely right. they're Christians. <laughs> Uh, because that's the kind of love that Jesus yeah. teaches. And it models for us this unbelievable forgiveness of like, how could you forgive somebody who took your child's life uh, or anything like that, you know, physically abusive or, or other atrocities? Uh, it's hard. It's really, really, really difficult. Right. So yeah. in this, I think you have to look at one, it's a believer. Yep. Right. The, yep. The, that's very significant. Then the idea of a believer because it says if another believer sins. Right. So they're wronging you. It doesn't say they're abusing you. Right. So a believer maybe might slip up with their words and gossip about you. Mm-hmm. A believer might be sassy to you. Yeah. A believer might um, uh, which be is, a little too prideful and push themselves in front of you in line. Which is a form of abuse if right. they keep doing it. Sure. But what it's not saying is somebody who's acting like an unbeliever. Right. Killing you. Uh, you know, they kill you. You can't forgive them seven times today <laughs> right? because they can't kill you seven times today. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. They're not raping you here. Right. They're not uh, uh, beating you seven times today. Right. Right. So, so those kinds of things, almost always, if you read the lists of sins in the new Testament, mm. usually those kind of violent things, those kind of attacking kind of things are never associated with Christian behavior. Right. So he's talking to about believers in everyday life. 
a believer offends you, you forgive them. If they offend you seven times today, that's great. That's great insight. D- by d- the way. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really good. Be- because think of the the list that Paul gives of mm-hmm. the violent, the angry, mm-hmm. the 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 adulterous, the right, the murderous. Those are, are are sins that are not attributed to the way Christians would behave. Right. So this one, it's believers wronging you, not mm-hmm. assaulting you. Right. Because there's a big difference between those two things. Yeah. So then, if you have somebody who's sassy, or you know that person that just gets under your skin, mm-hmm. forgive them. Forgive them, right. forgive them, forgive them, look past it, find another way because you've been forgiven. Yeah. yeah. Well, the funny thing is, uh, this the ironic thing about this whole conversation since it started is when I originally said, uh, it seems like you're welcoming abuse. Yeah. I was literally meaning exactly what you just said, oh, uh-huh. which is like uh, uh, somebody is mean to me and I forgive oh, them and then right. I'm their friend again and right. then they're incredibly mean again. Right, right. And then you mm-hmm. do that seven times a day for a month. Yeah. And it's like, uh, why would I welcome this abuse in my life? That's right. what I was really meaning. Yeah. So, uh, but I would say this is a believer you can't get away from for some reason. Yeah. Right. right. Because they're... a coworker, for instance. Yeah. Well, at that, at that point, the only way that you're going to, because remember forgiveness is for you, not for them. Right. So when you're going, Chris is just a, just being a jerk, but you know what? I'm not gonna let that ruin my day today. Mm-hmm. And then you're a jerk 15 minutes from now. And I'm like, I'm not gonna let that ruin my day today. Right. Right. He's not controlling my day. Uh, and what you just said, by the way, packs a punch because uh, don't let's not assume that all of our listeners understand that. And even if they do understand it, they need to be reminded that forgiveness is for the person forgiving, right. not for those who need to be forgiven. Right. Because, you know, so I teach divorce recovery, yeah. uh, uh, used to teach it yeah, yeah. way more often than I do now. But, but back in my old church, I mean, I taught it two or three times a year for 20 years in a row. And every time that I talk about forgiveness, um, we, you know, we, we, that's a revolutionary thought, right? right? Because w- w- when we're mad at somebody, we feel like we're punishing them, right? But the reality is that person probably could care less, right? Right. So we walk around with this bitterness and hatred and anger, and, we, and it eats us up inside. And we feel like, man, I'm not releasing them. They don't deserve forgiveness. Right. They, I'm not giving it to them because they don't deserve it. And, and, and then when you look at the teachings of Jesus, Jesus would say, well, wait a minute. The forgiveness has nothing to do with them. Right. Forgiveness is required because it has everything to do with you. Right. Because you're the one suffering. Right. And it doesn't say just take it. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. That's right. Call you out. Right. I'm not going to just take it. Hey, that was wrong. You can't right. do that. You can't treat me that way. I'm not going to. And then you go, oh, Jeff, dude, I am so sorry. You're right. That was wrong. Would you forgive right. me? So then if... There is repentance. Forgive. Yeah, right. The, if there's repentance. Right. So I rebuke. Dude, you can't treat me that way. That's not yeah. okay. Yeah, so yeah. there's a confrontation here. You miss. Uh, so let, let me turn it around so that I'm the one that's abusing you, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I'm abusing you and you go, I'm done with that. You cannot treat me this way, Jeff. That's wrong. And then I go, oh, you're right. That is wrong. Dude, I'm sorry. It, that was a sin. I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? At that point, I'm demonstrating a certain amount of acknowledgement that what I did was wrong mm-hmm. and I'm changing my mind about my behavior. Right. Then you forgive, which is what the word repent means. Right. Then I do that seven times today. You confront me seven times today mm-hmm. and seven times I acknowledge that what I did was wrong. Then you forgive me. Mm. So it doesn't expect me to forgive in this instance. He's not demanding that I, I just extend forgiveness without repentance. Right. Which by the way, God doesn't forgive you without repentance. Mm-hmm. Right. And so uh, God is not asking us just to walk around like meek sheep and being bullied by wolves all the time mm-hmm. and just accept it. Just take it. Right. Thank you, sir. May I have another. Right. right. Instead, it's uh, you rebuke them. If they repent, then you forgive. Even if they do it seven times today and they repent all seven times, you forgive all seven times. Yeah. Right. So there, there's a two way going there. It's not a one way. Right. And, uh, and by the way, that word rebuke, uh, it doesn't have to be a harsh rebuke, although it can be. Yeah, might need to be. Uh, might need to be. By the seventh time. <laughs> right. The seventh time. Yeah. That, that, I would imagine that it could be yeah, a harsh yeah. one if it's hey, the same thing. Hey, the t- same t- person. If we get the seven times in the same thing, you're going to have to forgive me because <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm right. going to beat you down. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, because I'm not as good of a Christian as that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, by the way, uh, you and I shot a video. We, we, were, we did a video project and they wanted us to fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my and, goodness! And, and they they wanted us to pretend to have like an altercation, right? Yeah, yeah. Where we kind of bumped in each other. And yeah. We were like, "Hey, man, let's go!" Oh. And uh, and so I tried to push you, and I went boom. 
boom, and I pushed you as hard as I could, and you didn't even move. <laughs> and then you, and then you pushed me, and you, <laughs> I flew back. I felt so bad. <laughs> I flew back into the staff. Who, by the a way, booth. a booth. They, they, they were sitting down like at a dinner booth or yeah, whatever, yeah, and yeah. I shoved you. And you just flew back into that. And and they were all watching, which yeah, means yeah. you pushed me down in front of the entire staff. <laughs> And you're like, and everybody was like, oh my goodness. So I think if there's ever going to be a physical fight, I think I got my money on Jeff. <laughs> it it's felt like, so bad. It's like, it's like, yeah, as long as, as long as I, uh, well, well, the first time we bumped and the director went, no, 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 no. You, you guys got to really lean into it. Make it look real. So then you shoved me and then I just right in the middle of your chest, just kind of shoved you so oh, hard. Yeah. I felt so bad. And then, you go, and then you go, I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're like, you're like, I didn't realize you just fly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like feet off the ground flying. Yeah, it, was yeah, it was really funny. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, uh, you, you know, the, the Lewis Meads uh, has a, a thing that I always quote when I preach on forgiveness, and it says, "I forgave to set a prisoner free, only to realize the prisoner was me." Yeah, that's huge, right? Yep. And so it's like it's like that's really the big uh, realization about forgiveness is that we think it's for the other person, but Jesus says, "No, it's for you." Yeah. And so I think it's because Jesus wants us to walk around free of anger and bitterness. Yep. And, uh, and, and by the way, that also, if you want to flip, flip the coin and talk about the same coin from a different perspective, that also goes with forgiving yourself as well. Yeah. So a lot of us have a hard time knowing that, Hey, God forgives me for my atro- atrocities, but I have a hard time forgiving myself because I really truly feel bad. And I've done these things. That I acknowledge how wrong they are, but God, God doesn't want us to live in the guilt. Yeah. As long as there's true repentance. If you, if you truly repented, which yeah. repentance at its core means to change your mind, change your direction. Right. And go from your way to God's way. Yeah. And then, and of course, yeah. you know, God encourages us to make amends. Yeah. So we offer our apologies to everybody. We, we try to make things right. We even try to make restitution. Yeah. Right. So all of those things are in place. But forgiving ourselves is just as important. So if God has chosen to forget your sins, for you know, you know, so he says, I, "I bury your sins in the sea, and I choose to remember them no more." Right. So, so by the way, God, it's not like God can't remember your sins. God chooses to wipe your slate clean. Right. He chooses to treat you with grace, and the definition of grace is the unmerited favor of God, right. which means He chooses to view you and love you and treat you as if you have never ever sinned. Right. So if God has forgotten your sin, then we need to forget our sins, yeah. right? Although it's hard to forget, but but we can forgive ourselves. And then the other thing that we didn't hardly cover here, and we don't really have a ton of time, is there's always going to be temptations. So it turns out it's not a sin to tempt, or to be tempted. Right. But it is a sin to provide temptation for others. Mm, right. Oh, yeah, the mill around the neck thing. We didn't right, even talk right. about There will always be temptations to sin. He says it's not, it's not a, a sin to be tempted. Right. Right. Um, but he says, what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting. So right. we have to be, you know, considering of that, you know, what do we, what do we provide for others or, you know, something that's not a temptation for you, but that you're making it available to others and they wind up getting into that. Or right? you're right. in sin and you're dragging somebody down. Yeah. 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 I, I had a, a, a friend who, um, a, a, a Christian couple that, uh, they became Christians and they came from really rough background and they, they can't, they, this verse convinced them that they should sell their bar. Mm. Right. So uh, he said, Oh man, I don't remember the last time I drank until I was drunk. Mm-hmm. But he said, Every night I have to throw somebody out. Right. So I'm making it possible for them. Right. Yeah, he's and, a part, he's a part of that. And so God used that verse to get his attention. That's I, why we don't serve alcohol in our small groups, for instance. Right. Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. thing. All, all those kinds of things. So, uh, it, there, it is fair for a mature Christian because he says, um, be careful to ca- not to cause one of these little ones to fall. So he's talking about immature Christians. Mm-hmm. So it's important for mature Christians, the more you become mature spiritually, the more you're thinking about your actions having a, a derog- potential derogatory impact on somebody who's not as mature mm-hmm. spiritually or prepared, right? Yeah. And so that'd be it. Well, that it looks like a great place to end, and that's our time. So we will see you next time on The Bible Guys.